and give you a quick demo on how to convert a video file to the photo JPEG format. Maybe you shot some video on your phone or you downloaded some video footage from the internet that you want to work with and you want to bring it into Max. Uh, the best format to use for dynamic time warping effects in Max is going to be the photo JPEG format. You're going to have a significantly larger file size um, but you'll be able to jump around in time in that video really smoothly because there's no time compression in that format. So to show you what we're going to end up with is going to be this like uh, bonobocirrus.mov file. So it's a quick time wrapper over the photo JPEG codec. And you can see this video has a huge file size. It's three gigabytes for only three minutes of video. This is the file I started with, which is a MP4 file type, and you can see it's only 67 or so megabytes, uh, the exact same length, exact same size. So uh, the, the cost of doing this is huge in terms of disk space, um, but the benefits are great in terms of the smoothness of how the video works in your patch. So let's look at how we do this. I'm going to open up Adobe Premiere. And as soon as that loads, I'm just going to start a new project. Here we go, new project. I can leave all this stuff as the default because I'm just going to be importing and exporting. Um, and I'm going to import the file I want to convert by double clicking my import media zone and I'm going to get that mp4 file. Hit import, there we go, there it is. I'm going to right click on it, which will bring up this contextual menu, and I'm going to say new sequence from clip. That will make my timeline sequence have all of the um, properties that that original video has in terms of the aspect ratio and the frame rate and all that stuff. So there's uh, my clip with the audio, uh, and I'm just going to go then immediately to file export media. And this is where I'm going to do some configuring here. I can give this a name and a location. I'm going to save it into that same media folder. We've got the one on there so it doesn't override the one I already did. Um, I want my format to be QuickTime. I can export the video and the audio. And then in the video options, I'm going to set the codec to photo JPEG. Then I've got to adjust some of these settings. I'm going to check my source and just basically match everything to the source. So the, the width, I want to be uh, 1280, and I want the height to be 720. Um, the aspect, I want square pixels. That's the uh, little parentheses here. Uh, I'm going to do a progressive field order to match that. The frame rate 29.97 is the same. And I don't need any of the other stuff. I'll just double check here that all of these things match up. That looks, ah, I could fix the, the audio to bring make that uh, 41. Okay. And then I'm just going to hit uh, export. And then it will take uh, a minute or so, depends on how long uh, your original footage is. And what you'll see is we'll end up with uh, this video. It'll let me scrub really smoothly through here without any delays or glitches. So if you want to use the um, busy effect, so like dynamically change the rate of playback of the video, this is the format to use. One thing you want to avoid, um, when you go to the format here, there's also a JPEG format. You don't want that. That will export every frame of the video as a photo, uh, an individual photo file. That's not what you want. You want the uh, QuickTime format wrapped around the photo JPEG codec. So use this uh, technique for rendering your Max videos.